Hey, welcome back. Another day, another vlog. Wednesday edition, 29th today, and wow. Lots to talk about. Let's get straight into this thing. Um, what a night. Um, shooting an upcoming video, I think it was last week. Last week I went out. Yeah, I think it was last week. Mundaring Weir uh, area. Uh, some beautiful spots. You can see the dam from some certain locations you can get to. Um, shooting Astro. So Galactic Center was perfect. Super dark skies. Thought, you know, I'll go out, that'll be great. Went through my photo pills and all that. Galactic Center was going to look fantastic. Uh, all the Did all my other tests, my other weather maps. Did all that. But the one thing I hadn't really worked out was clouds. Now, clouds, I just got the Windy app. I think it's a Windy app. And I'll let you know, I'll put a link down below for that because it made a monster difference last night. Because the previous one I went out and I probably got about half an hour to 40 minutes. I've got a video on it to do. And I, I, got, a, I got five or six shots. I think I told you about it. I got about five or six shots I was really happy with and come up good. Uh, just And then, a, High level cloud, just thin mist of cloud come through and that was the end of it. So it didn't really give me a chance to really make sure I got nailed it and get just done something amazing, which is what I want. Something I could put in my portfolio um, for my website if I ever, once I, well not whenever, when I get it done. I know I keep saying that, but I really need to do it. Um, I'm just gonna find the extra 10 bucks a month to be honest. But I'll get, I'll get there, I know I can get there, and I wanna have everything ready so I can make it sort of spectacular. And something I've been chasing for a long while was that really nice Milky Way shot. Uh, being Australia, we get a really good clear image of it. We got lots of dark sky spots. And I just hadn't really had much luck in regards to that. So I went through the windy, I, I looked at it, Probably last four or five nights, I, I looked at what it was. I went through, but it must have been a couple of weeks ago. Because I, I looked through a week in advance, and I went through it every night. And sometimes there was like high clouds or either low clouds, but nothing like flat zeros. And then last night, zeros across the board for about a five to six hour gap. And I thought, you know what, I've got to do it. So I then went from that into photo pills checked about the galactic center and the, the moon where the moon was at because it's just starting to come back it's at 25 percent so a quarter of the way it finished at 9 30 uh and then it allowed and then from 9 30 on basically it was clear skies till about three or four in the morning we started to get a little, little bit of cloud back on, on the windy app for stuff it not going to do it and go back out see if i can get those shots that i I, want, I thought I wanted and I deserved uh, that should be in that, that video when I do it. I didn't want to have just six shots to choose from. I wanted to be able to really have something to make it pop. I'm getting better and better. I did some really good ones at Bell's Astro. The Bell's Astro video was really good and those images come up very, very cool. And I knew I had to get something better. I want to get better each time I do this. That's the, the idea of this. To, to teach myself and to get better as I go, which then gives you a little bit better things to watch and to look at. So that's the idea. So I thought, now stuff that I went out and wow. It was, I really have zero excuses <laughs> if I've stuffed this up. I don't know what I've done because I did everything. It was crystal clear, perfect, no noise, stuff all light. Milky Way was just pumping. I caught it as just as it was coming up over the dam. Uh, yeah, amazing. Some amazing. I've got 150 odd shots, and I think probably 130 of them I could easily use. So I have plenty of options. Also did some panoramas, vertical panoramas of the Milky Way. Some horizontal ones as well. I've got the, the actual dam as well going up uh, in there so I've, I've got a, just a plethora of 
wicked shots to use, so I'm super, super stoked. I was actually a little giddy, <laughs> I'm going to be honest, a little giddy sitting there taking photos and I, I can understand, um, I watch Photo Tripper a lot, he's a, like a pretty cool dude to watch and very much fun and makes, makes photography really exciting and I can see how he gets excited about his job and when he gets to those locations where he, things just go right and it's just amazing um, because to me last night was the first night I got somewhere and just went oh my god and just kept going and just kept I had, I had, the, I had this set up with the GoPro on it did a time lapse with that I've got this camera I even got even got the Lumix out to try and do some handheld but couldn't do it it needs light uh, it needed another stand I just didn't have another tripod with me um, I didn't want to take the big girl with me it's a little bit too heavy to carry I've got a Definitely get another little carbon fiber one of some description. But yeah, just amazing. Super, super stoked. Uh, yeah, anyway. So that was last night. So obviously I didn't do much on that video coming out. I was there most of the night and yeah. But I think you'll see the remnants of that in a couple of weeks when I get this, uh, when I finally get to that video and get it done. It's gonna be a long time to do those uh, photos because I've got a lot to choose. So just, I think it just, comes down to the fact that um, planning and preparation is a huge deal. Um, it took me to find this Cloudy app that I never knew about existed um, by watching Photo Trip, and I do thank him for that if he ever does watch this video. But um, it's just amazing. It, it, it gives you three levels of clouds, a low, medium, and high level cloud. It'll tell you from zero to 100 for those clouds. Tells you all these other wind speeds, uh, when the ISS satellites coming past. It's good. It's a really good app. Um, if you are planning some outdoor landscape stuff, uh, even for just like sunrise, sunset, or any landscape, if you want something where that cloud's going to be in there, great app. Definitely chuck it on your phone. Definitely use it. I can highly recommend it. It made last night super, super special. So yeah, so that's that. Um, also, now last night we did talk, I have talked a couple of times about custom battery grips, the battery grip from my M50. Um, amazing. Really, really happy. I had it on last night, four and a half hours straight with the camera on. Didn't turn it off and I had, I put the batteries back on the charger today just to see how they go. Didn't have even a, a glimpse of a drama. Um, got cold, got down about five, six degrees. Um, so even in the cold temps, no dramas. And they hadn't even got below half on my batteries. Um, so having that battery grip on there, not having, I would have had to change at least two to three batteries normally, I reckon, for that period. If it was just with the camera on constantly, me with the screen going on and off, and then the constant long, long, um, 10 second photos and just constantly with bracketed ones and then leaving it on and adjusting and stuffing around. It was, uh, it was a, a good four, four, at least four and a half hours straight of the camera on working non-stop. So uh, fantastic. If you are looking away to get a little bit of more battery life and you're doing long shoots, uh, I can highly recommend the guys at Custom Battery Grips. Uh, if you've got an M50, they do do stuff for the ESSR and a couple of other models as well. Um, but yeah, if you are going to hook them up, let them know, I think you'll be really good. I did, the only thing, the only, as I said, the only downside I found with it was it would be great if the bottom base of it, the sides, the ends, were Arca Swiss compliant, much like a L bracket where you could just basically put it, bolt it on and then just slide it straight into your tripod, vertical or horizontal, that would make it a million bucks. Um, but other than that, it's, it's worked a treat and made a massive difference. I didn't have to dive in and change batteries halfway through a shot. I didn't have a battery cut out or anything like that. So very, very cool. Right, now, as well as uh, add-ons for that, let's talk about something else. I'm Back Official um, is the company and they've got an I'm Back 35. It's on Kickstarter at the moment, you're wondering, Ash, what the hell are you talking about? Okay, basically what this is, you take a vintage camera, here's my vintage camera, it's the only old one I've still got left, my, from my trip to Europe in 1997, <laughs> it's still going, I can't believe it. Uh, 
I to 700, I think this is one of the first ones, it costs like 400 bucks Australian when it came out, it's crazy. Uh, I tried taking some photos of this the other night, and, or the other week, and it was bloody terrible. <laughs> um, anyways, so you take an old camera, say a Pentax K1000, a Canon AEO1, uh, some of those beautiful old Olympuses, those old mechanical, got an old mechanical film camera, but you want, you know, when the digital age film is, really a pain in the ass. I, I learnt in film. It ain't, yeah, it's cool to learn, but it's a pain in the ass. Sucking in all those chemicals every day, having a dark room, you've got to build a dark room somewhere, you've got to have all that, all the enlargers, uh, chemicals, storing chemicals, getting rid of chemicals, changing chemicals, sucking in the evil crap it was. I don't know what it, it can't be good for you, the developer and stuff, so. All that ain't much fun. What these guys do at Ironback 35, they've created a back where basically you take your door off your film camera, you slide this unit on, it clips onto your back, slides and um, locks onto your back of your camera and replaces that door. It leaves a little square cutout, I guess much like the little screen on, the, on this girl. And then this other unit slides over and then the digital sensor basically go fills that void where that back is. So no, you don't have a door, so you can use, basically use your photo camera as an existing, all the dials, buttons, wheels, all that stuff, exposure, everything is mechanical. So you have to use your brain, you've got no automatic exposure, all of that, but when you push the button and go, it, light comes in, goes through that hole on that plate, goes into their sensor, into your back, stores it onto an SD card and you're away. Don't have to worry about developing the film anymore, but you get that same vintage feel. And it's much, the size of it, by looking at it, um, is much the same as, I guess, a battery extender or, or a big battery grip on your on your camera. So it's not really that bad. I think that, I think that, I'm not sure how good it is. It is on Kickstarter. Um, I believe they've done a, a first, this is the second time they've, around they've done it. But if you're a vin you really want to try that vintage out, um, and but you prefer to have digital files instead of film, which probably realistically is a lot better. Um, I've got to say, and I've come from a film background. Um, I think this is a brilliant idea. Good luck to them. I hope they do really well. Um, I'll, I'll chuck the link on Kickstarter in down below so you can check it out as well. So I think it's pretty cool. And I said, if you're a vintage, you really want to feel that vintage camera, and I love vintage cameras. I've always thought if you could take a K1000 Pentax, which this works with, and make it digital, it'd be amazing. Uh, just like, just for a little bit of fun, and how cool would it be to relive your, my youth, I guess. Now, it costs 480 US bucks on the Kickstarter campaign. That's, I think, about, that was $50 US cheaper. Uh, then until what, it, what it, the RRP will be when it actually releases. So that's gonna be 80 bucks. So it's probably around, oh, let's let's say 550 Australian if you're gonna buy it, wait till it ends. So you've got an option, it's probably not too bad, but like these guys are starting, this is a great idea I think. If you're into vintage and you really wanna try that, if you've got some vintage cameras at home that you don't want to spend and go and buy a new one, you know how that works, you're happy with it, you just want the digital age, this is for you. Uh, I'm back official and it, the item is I'm back 35. So you can search for it on Kickstarter or check the link below, I'll put it there so you go check it out. Very, very cool, go support them. I think this could be something that we, I think would benefit a lot, a lot of people. Right, now Telstra, I, there's COVID-19, Heaps of companies come out. Um, Adobe, two, three months, fantastic. Thank you, Adobe. All these companies come out. The banks have helping. Everyone's helping. Communication companies are helping. I'm not sure about you, but I went looking to get my three 25 gigs of data extra on top of my phone, just in case um, I'm going back to work. To make sure that's all locked in. And I spent an hour on the Telstra app, uh, looking through all the pages. Apart from the constant crashing and the, the app just doesn't work, uh, good luck finding where you get this 25 gigs of free data. You have to sign up for it, but they have not made it easy. 
as a per normal Telstra that loves screwing the customers over, they go and offer this amazing deal, which would help a lot of people. Uh, it doesn't affect, surely, I mean, they could just go, right, it's, we're just gonna do it for three months, an extra 25 gig for everyone that's gonna plan for three months, here you go. Uh, but no, they, what they've done, we've offered it, and then we'll make it near on impossible to find the friggin' thing, because you've gotta go through the app to get to it. You go into the app, it, when it doesn't crash, I went through the only places I could I could read a story about it, but there's no thing to sign up. There's no nothing. It's yeah, not impressive. Uh, it should be easy, Telstra. Uh, that's pretty piss poor. But uh, I'll have another crack maybe tomorrow. Um, I've got another spare hour up my sleeve to waste on it um, to see if I can find it again. But at the moment, I, I got sick of the app crashing, and I have to constantly refresh the app. And it, yeah, usual Telstra, nothing really works. Right, now some, another big cannon release today. They are a bit of an on fire team at the moment. Excuse me. They've brought out an update to make your DSLR or mirrorless camera a webcam. So if you're home, you're shooting live, currently you can do it through some secondary companies. So with my Canon 50, I can connect that to an Elgato. Um, Capture, I think it's a capture card, I think they call it. But my computer is doesn't have the software to run it. So that's you no know, good for me. Um, Canon released an update where you can use your camera as a webcam, basically directly by just putting it in the HDMI port, just a cord straight to that to your uh, computer. Um, but at the moment, this is a testing phase uh, and it only works for Windows. So if you have a Windows computer, if you're one of those people, which is mostly business, um, and I think that's what they're aiming it towards, to help our business people at home, to get a decent picture instead of crappy webcams, which 99% of them are, unless you pay $400 for one, which you might as well buy a camera. Um, if you've got a good camera at home, why not use the quality of that to help you out so you can actually, people can see you and see what you're talking about, especially if you're trying to show products off or or stuff on whiteboards or anything like that, some sort of teaching uh, thing makes a big difference. So go check it out, uh, that's from Canon Rumors. If you go to Canon Rumors, you can, you'll see the article and I'll give you the link over to the page. You can sign up for the beta trial and go check that out. But at the moment, only Windows computers, uh, no Mac support as yet. Maybe down the road will be good. Ideally, my solution, would be to put a webcam as part of the camera connect and then I can just tether it to my, and just connect it through my phone and I can, instead of having to hook up to a computer, I can go straight to my phone and run it out of there, like I do here, and I can do everything here. I don't need to sit in, as long as I'm in here and I'm talking, I'm live, I can have my laptop here, looking at the stream anyway, so I can answer any questions as an administrator, so that would be the easiest way possible to do it. But yeah, hopefully Canon, they can do that. I think they'll, using your camera as a web tool would be much useful, and obviously this is a good first step for them, so if you are a Windows, definitely go try it out, and that will help them out get better at what they're doing. So very, very cool for business people and people stuck at home. And that's about it. Oh, got to get some sleep today, but other than that, well, I'm, as I said, I'm super stoked. It's one of those rare days. This is probably, I feel the same today about, I guess, after that, I found a secret canyon in, at work when I found that beautiful canyon after the rain with those beautiful, those waterfall shots and that, that awesome day I had there. Well, that was last night for me with Astro. Uh, I hope I can do the Milky Way proud when I get them up. And I can make this beautiful part of Perth pop like it did for me when it, I visually, for me last night, I was just sitting there in awe. Um, so hopefully I can do it proud. Maybe a week or two. I've got about five or six videos in between that. So I'm a little bit behind on that regards. But we'll get there. Um, probably get a little bit kept caught up when I get back to work when I start running out of things to shoot. <laughs> And that's about it for Wednesday. Hump day is done and dusted. Hope you're all well, safe and sound. The restrictions for COVID, uh, rumors for at least us Australians, it's, if 
if we all get that app and sign up to that, uh, there's talk there, the Prime Minister's saying that we should be able to ease even more restrictions in the coming weeks. We need more people to sign up with that. Um, the more they do it, the, the easier it becomes for them, the track and trace people, and that's what it's all about now. Once you reduce that curve, you go to a track and trace program, that's what you, they've gone into. And that's really the way forward, you have to do that, and that by then you can actually eliminate the whole thing, and then that at least opens Australia up. Uh, international travel still definitely out until the uh, vaccine, there won't be any international travel till then. Uh, so that's at least 12 months off, but domestically we may be able to have at least a open country, possibly for New Zealand, which ain't a bad place. That's, I mean, between Tasmania and New Zealand and, and what we've got in Australia, we cover pretty much everything you could ever want to travel to and have a holiday. So that at least would, in the next 12 months would tide us. If that doesn't tide you over, then you've got issues. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. We do live in a beautiful country and we've got some amazing neighbours and that beautiful Tasmania island down below, all those amazing people down there and that gorgeous country they look after for us. Uh, we're very, very spoiled. There's a lot worse off people than us. Anyway, that's it. Another day for me. Hope you stay safe. I'll see you all again tomorrow, Thursday. Anyway, if you're coming or going, or you were up last night with me in the Milky Way, I'll see you soon. Peace.